Hello and welcome to New Frontiers on CCTV International. I'm Qi Xiaojun in Beijing. In today's program, we reach the final part of our series about China's traditional pastimes and games. The billions of people around the world who witnessed the opening ceremony of the Beijing Olympics were treated to a vivid interpretation of many of China's traditional art forms. Among them were arts such as Peking Opera that are quintessentially Chinese. Of course, a performance lasting little more than an hour could not encompass the more mundane aspects of China's rich cultural heritage. One form of entertainment that people around the world tend to associate with China is Mahjong. As a game of skill, strategy, and a certain degree of chance, Mahjong, as we know it today, has enthralled millions of Chinese people for over a hundred years. This naturally begs the question, who was the genius who invented such a complex game? In 1861, British Consul General F. E. B. Harvey visited Ningbo, an important port on China's eastern coast. Ningbo was one of five port cities that had been forced open to Western merchants after China lost the First Opium War of 1840. During his term in China. Harvey wrote numerous letters back to Britain, and in one he provided a detailed account of a game Chinese people loved to play, mahjong. Playing the game of mahjong, called sparrow by the local people, was, he said, very effective in curing homesickness. According to F. E. B. Harvey, the game of mahjong was incredibly popular, particularly among officials and businessmen. Moreover, it was not merely a game, he said, but a fine medium through which to socialize. Even though it consists of more or less random notes, Harvey's account of mahjong still holds interest today, as it sheds some light on the history of the game. For a long time. People have been puzzled by the origins of mahjong and how it evolved and progressed. This photo on the subject of mahjong reveals that the game was certainly popular in the early years of the Republic of China period, which began in the year 1911. However, no records about the origin of mahjong can be found in any historical records, as rulers in the past regarded the game as indecent and felt that it had a corrupting influence on society. Consequently, mention of the game was shunned by historians. A couple of years ago, Gu Xin, who works for a literary magazine in Suzhou, came up with a supposition about the origins of mahjong, and it drew considerable attention. Tai Chang people call it "nao," it's called "jiang." It's not called "jiang," it's called "jiang." Tai Chang people call it "nao," it's called "jiang." Da nao is da jiang, da nao is da jiang, xiao nao is xiao jiang, ma. 雀就叫麻将，就叫麻将的。那么，麻将牌有另外一种说法，叫麻雀牌。In ancient times, today's city of Taizang was known as Liu Jia Gang, and during the Ming and Qing dynasties, it was a very important port city for the shipment of grain. Gu Xin concluded. But the name mahjong was closely related to the soldiers who guarded the grain storehouses. Why does mahjong have a connection with the soldiers? That 
，枪一箭，首先就来鸟，就来雀，来吃粮食。新仓新的仓库是没老鼠的，刚刚开始没老鼠，但是鸟雀马上来了，所以要打鸟雀。In the game of mahjong, there are 144 tiles, and these include the circle, bamboo, character, honor, red, green, and white dragons. From his research, Gu Xing came to believe that all the patterns on the tiles were related to the bird eradicating activities of the guards responsible for protecting the grain. That tile is to hit one tile, hit two tiles, throw a knife, use a knife to kill birds. 因为你这个火铳的后坐力，毕竟那个就我们说它那个射出去的力量不大的，它要考虑风向，然后打起鸟来，才容易，嗯，有效果吧。我是这样想，所以有东南西北风。呃，我连而想到嘛，重就是打重，重就是打重了，红中打重，罚打得多。哎，长官有奖，所谓叫发财，我是这样讲。白白就没打着，打不着，所以打鸟呃就是这样打中，打得多，打不着。According to Gu Xin's research, in the past, some circle tiles featured a picture of a bird, and he believes that each of these represented a sparrow that had been killed. Double bamboo tiles, meanwhile, resembled the legs of a dead bird. Officers gave out rewards simply by counting the number of sparrows' legs, and the character tiles represented the sums of cash issued. However, Gu Xin's supposition is based entirely on the tile patterns, and so far, no historical documents have been found to support his argument. But while the origin of mahjong or mahjong is difficult to determine, can we perhaps shed some light on this by tracing its development? Among all the games passed down from ancient China, mahjong is probably the most popular. Not only because it's highly entertaining. But also because it involves, apart from skill, a considerable amount of luck. The ancient book History of the Warring States, the State of Qi, tells us Linzhe is a prosperous city. Linzhe people. Enjoy many forms of entertainment, including playing musical instruments, cockfighting, dog racing, playing ball games, playing chess, and playing tile games. A primitive form of tile game called liobo had already been popular early in the Spring and Autumn and Warring States periods before the year 221 BC. For this reason, liobo has been regarded as the ancestor of all tile games. From its primitive nature, it is very simple. 它分成就是说，呃，呃，十二枚棋子，六黑六红，就是说一方持六枚黑棋，一方持呃六枚红棋。那么它中间呢，它呃用那个呃骰子来掷骰，通过掷骰的方式来进行互相走。就是说，如果你的骰子掷下去的呃点数如果是大的话，你的步子就可以走得多；你的点数掷下去少的话，你的步子就走得少。Dice, called in northern China shaizhe, can be seen in almost every form of tile game. As some tile games were simple and didn't involve too much brain work, they quickly gained popularity among the less educated and those in the lower strata of society who enjoyed gambling. However, better educated tile game players preferred more complex forms that involved serious thinking.
However, to really understand the origins of Mahjan, we need to know where the tiles came from, since they are the major constituent of the game. It turns out that it all started with the ancient card game called Yiz, meaning tree leaves. China's oldest poker game, Yiz, was born during the Tang Dynasty. However, people are still divided on its origins. One theory involves the famous Tang Dynasty Emperor Taizong. It is said that when Taizong asked the prestigious monk Yixing how many generations his dynasty would last, the monk didn't reply. Instead, he presented the emperor with a set of Yezi cards that he had made himself.唐太宗当时不解气就说这个一行和尚这个是表示什么意思呢送我这样一幅叶子牌那么后来呢就是他终于理解了他的意思这个叶子牌呢中间呢就是隐喻的叶子两个字那么叶子这个两个字呢按照